Hello, gentlemen. Please introduce yourselves. Hello, I am Henry Stratton, and I am Sir George Wood, Wellington's artillery commander. But you, you call me G Dub. I like yeah. that. Okay. So, Mr. Shrapnel, please yes. enlighten the audience of why I have brought you here. I thought I brought you here. Well, honestly, I, I've meandered in here today to talk about my recent invention, and, as well as its impact on warfare. As for you, Mr. Wood? I, I'm also here today to discuss Mr. Shrapnel's device and how I used it in the war against Napoleon. That's a good war. Alright, so Mr. Shrapnel, tell me about this invention. Well, I call it the shrapnel shell. I'm very arrogant. Essentially, it's a bunch of musket balls packed into a cannonball casing that has a, a time fuse on it that explodes at certain intervals. The cannonball was intended to travel down range, and once within range of the enemy, a small charge would go off, breaking the cannonball's casing, opening and freeing the musket balls at a lethal velocity. Well... Needless to say, the first few firings had some issues due to malfunctions and faulty casings. These problems led to premature detonation and ended up injuring several of our finest soldiers. Poor Jackson. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey. <laughs> My bad. Once perfected, though, this weapon became very effective and dangerous. Indeed. Indeed it did. So what exactly was your purpose behind this device? But like any adolescent young man, I wanted to blow the f up. Well then. No, but for for realness, I just wanted to combine a musket ball, a musket short range lethality with a long distance effectiveness of a cannonball. I felt it would uh, give us the advantage and help us alleviate the numbers of Napoleon's ranks, thus giving us an edge in this war. Mr. Wood, I understand that you put Mr. Shrapnel's invention to use against Napoleon's troops on the battlefield. What is your opinion on its effectiveness? My opinion? Oh, um, yes, yes. Uh, without Henry's device, our British forces would not have been able to take key strategic positions during the Battle of Waterloo. Napoleon's forces were both baffled and startled by musket fire hitting them from over a mile away. You know, you know, Lieutenant, yes, Napoleon. Come to me, we must devise a strategy. Yes. We are here. They yes. are one mile away. One we, mile? We must take this position to win the war. Yes, Napoleon. Okay. Now the plan is good. Come where are these musket balls coming from? I do not from? know, sir, they are over a mile away. You saw me they are away. Where are they coming from? I don't know. Lieutenant, yes, Napoleon. Come to me, we must devise a strategy. Yes. Lieutenant, yes, Napoleon. Come to me, we must devise a strategy. Yes. Lieutenant, yes, Napoleon. Come to me, we must devise a strategy. Yes. Lieutenant, yes, Napoleon. Come to me, we must devise a strategy. Yes. Lieutenant, yes, Napoleon. Come to me, we must devise a strategy. Yes. Lieutenant, yes, Napoleon. Come to me, we must devise a strategy. Yes. Lieutenant, yes, Napoleon. Come to me, we must devise a strategy. Yes. Lieutenant, yes, Napoleon. Come to me, we must devise a strategy. Yes. Lieutenant, yes, Napoleon. Come to me, we must devise a strategy. Yes. Lieutenant, yes, Napoleon. Come to me, we must devise a strategy. Yes. Lieutenant, yes, Napoleon. Come to me, we must devise a strategy. Yes. Lieutenant, yes, Napoleon. Come to me, we must devise a strategy. Yes. Lieutenant, yes, Napoleon. Come to me, we must devise a strategy. Yes. Lieutenant, yes, Napoleon. Come to me, we must devise a strategy. Yes. Lieutenant, yes, Napoleon. Come to me, we must devise a strategy. Yes. Lieutenant, yes, Napoleon. Come to me, we must devise a strategy. Yes. Lieutenant, yes, Napoleon. Come to me, we must devise a strategy. Yes. So how would you say it has impacted warfare, both during and after the invention, Mr. Wood? Well, to understand how it impacted warfare, we need to understand the faults the original had. So I can explain the advancements made upon it. Thank you. I'll take it from here. The original, we must remember, was revolutionary for its time period though it did have several initial faults. Issues, issues such as the inability to detonate at proper time were very difficult to solve. As I stated earlier, Hester, <laughs> the calculations between fuse length and the length of the shell had to actually travel were surprisingly hard to equate, which resulted in tons of wasted ammunition and a lot of collateral damage. I lost, you remember I lost my arm almost. <laughs> okay. Also, there were some concerns relating to the cannonball casing. At first, the shell would heat up while inside the chamber of the cannon, crack, and prematurely detonate as it came out, causing allied casualties to the people firing the cannon. I mean, 
Yes, it was successful, but it was also a pain in my sphincter. Oh, a pain in the anus indeed. Put in your hair. Shut up. <laughs> I'd also like to talk about the advances made on the device by Captain Boxer to increase the shrapnel shell's effectiveness by adding a steel diaphragm. 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 I'm going to stop. Fram. Fram or diaphragm? Diaphragm. Fram. These new but there's ones. a bloody G. Or oh, uh. Weird English phonetical grammar you don't even know. Okay, um, anyways, it had this steel or iron diaphragm that would separate the casing charge and the musket balls, as you can clearly see depicted by this lovely diagram. Look at um, this illustration, lovely. Yes, indeed. This caused the musket balls to be more directed towards the enemy and also solved the premature ignition problem due to friction from the barrel. Now that the problems were no longer a factor, the device could be put into production and used in ordinary, as an ordinary weapon of warfare. Then and for many years to come, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, that about wraps this interview up. I wish I could say it was a pleasure, but I would be lying. Please just leave and don't steal anything. The shrapnel shell continued to undergo development as time progressed and was used in many battles and wars following its invention. Though the design was altered to more of a bullet-like shape, it remained part of most militaries such as France, Britain, and the United States' arsenal through World War I, whereafter the shrapnel rounds were replaced with high explosives or flechettes. Above you can clearly see the modifications made to the device by the time the First World War broke out. Although only somewhat similar in appearance, the shell still fulfilled shrapnel's original vision from 1803 over 100 years previous. I'm Henry Shrapnel. This is my Facebook page. Please like it.